Today's video is sponsored by Stereo. Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to Kuala Lumpur International Airport. Today I'm gonna to be flying Malaysia Airlines. It's always interesting to fly an airline out of their main hub and that's what I'm doing here today from Kuala Lumpur. I'm going up to Delhi on board the Airbus A330 in business class. Come with me and let's check it out. So you last saw me in Singapore, and yes, I did visit the Jewel, and yes, I have some amazing footage, but I'm saving that for a Singapore Airlines review coming in the next few weeks. I got between Singapore and Kuala Lumpur in economy class in one of Malaysia Airlines 737s. It's only 200 miles and 40 minutes in the air, so not worth a separate video, although it's worth pointing out they did serve me cake. Today's video kicks off in Kuala Lumpur, where I was able to check in and get going pretty quickly. KL has a very good fast track security lane, and I was soon airside. Our flight leaves from the satellite, which handles international flights, and as the model shows here, is a short ride away from the main building. I've been to KL before and used the funky little transit train, but I spied the opportunity to take a bus, which I figured might be more fun, weaving between aircraft and seeing them up close. As it turns out, almost nobody takes this bus, apart from, it seems, a few airport workers wanting a break from passengers. Also, as soon as you leave, you just head into a tunnel, so it's not that fun. Next time you're in KL, don't be tempted by the bus. It's official, the transit train is faster and more fun. The satellite terminal is lovely by the way. It's quite easy to forget that KL is a major city in the region and the airport handled as many passengers in 2019 as JFK Airport did in New York. Malaysia Airlines Golden Lounge is on the mezzanine level and, as denoted by the blue and green flashes, is open to both Sapphire and Emerald One World frequent flyers. Hello. On entry, if you're an Emerald member, you turn right into the platinum area of the lounge. Effectively, this part is a first-class lounge. This isn't the most visually spectacular first-class lounge you'll ever see, but it does do the job. It's pretty relaxing to be here. However, the lounge doesn't have a business centre, which seems to me like a pretty basic oversight. It does partially make up for this shortcoming by having a super little dining room, which feels pretty exclusive, and restaurant-quality food on offer too. Oh, and of course, we can't have a video these days without checking out the shower. Our flight was aboard one of Malaysia Airlines Airbus A330-300 aircraft, which fly some of the longer haul routes as well as shorter mid-haul routes like ours to Delhi. I want to say a big thank you to Stereo who are sponsoring today's video. 
Stereo is a live podcasting app that's more like having an open phone line or hosting your own radio show. And I found it fantastic exploring with the app over the past couple of weeks. I've already recorded two shows, which you can listen to online, download the Stereo app, the link is in the description below, and find out what it's all about. One of the things I love about being a YouTuber is getting questions from all you guys. And if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you've probably seen me host a few Q&A sessions on there in the past. But the answers I give have to be fairly brief because you have to be on social media. Stereo's not like that. Have a listen. And I swear to God, it was the only free seat on the entire plane. And it was next to me. And the, uh, the cabin crew came over and said, you know, boarding complete. And we did like a little fist bump. Uh, she's a really sweet old lady from <laughs> from Los Angeles, and we're like, "Yes, get in there." There's no sweet. sweeter sound than boarding complete, yes. is there? When there's yes, a exactly. There are two fantastic things that I love about the Stereo app. Unlike podcasts, which require a lot of post production and making sure that everything's all nice and shiny for the audience, this is just an open phone line, and I can do it from my home with. A mobile phone microphone there's no need for any fancy equipment and you can join in too by sending voice notes like this hi paul hi angus uh, but i was really surprised to learn just how prevalent diesel electric trains still are uh, here in england i was wondering how come the uk is this far behind the first phase of east west rail is going to be a lovely new line and it's going to have diesel trains on it we're not electrifying it and it really is absolutely insane did, did we have the first electrified railway in this country? So why not join me on Stereo? Find me on there. My username is Paul Lucas, and you can download the app with the link in the description below. I've already got two shows online, and I've got a third going live with a very special guest this Sunday at 9pm GMT. Don't miss it. Download the app, and I'll see you there. A brief reminder that this video was shot during the initial outbreak of COVID in March 2020. No masks were worn by the crew and there were no rules or even recommendations at this time in Malaysia to wear one. However, you'll spot a couple of passengers in the video who did choose to wear a mask. It's really interesting editing these videos to see how slow the human response to COVID was. Anyway, that's enough talking about COVID now. It's a bit dull. So let's board. I'm good, how are you? Over here, very well. Welcome Thank you very much, yeah. thank you. Evening. Evening. The A330 300 has 27 lie flat seats in business class, arranged in a very similar configuration to Finnair's A330 you saw in a recent video. There are three special throne seats with double storage space in alternating rows 1K, 4K, and 6K. For some reason, there's no row 3 on these aircraft. As you can see on this side, the seats alternate between having one and two seats, with the window seats in the two-seat configuration, the only ones in the whole cabin not to have direct aisle access. The left side of the aircraft features single seats only, in another alternating configuration. Finally, there's a small cabin of extra legroom economy just behind us, the front seats of which look excellent value. The business class seats have a three-point seat belt. You only wear the shoulder part on takeoff and landing. These throne seats exist to make use of the space between the seat pairs in front, like so. And if you're wondering how that works for the front row, well, they just cut into the bulkhead.
Kuala Lumpur to Delhi is 2,402 miles and our flight takes 5 hours and 20 minutes. Malaysia Airlines is the only legacy airline to fly direct, although Indigo, AirAsia X and Melindo provide lower cost competition. I won't go on too much about the seat as this is a very similar seat to the one you saw two videos ago with Finnair, but needless to say with double storage space this is ideal for someone like me who travels with a lot of stuff. It's far from the newest seat model on the market, although Malaysia only installed these a few years ago, but it is more than adequate for this evening flight across to Delhi. You might wish for a more ergonomic table or a larger screen, but this product is far superior to the 222 layout they had previously and is still fine for the price I paid for this flight. Headphones are given out too. These aren't particularly great, like most airline headphones, and had really poor bass. As always, bring your own, and an adapter too. This airline is famous for its satay, which it proudly proclaims to have served ever since the airline was founded. The menu isn't bad, Perhaps a little unadventurous, but three choices of main course is fine and there's a very good selection of teas to go along with it. If, like me, you don't care a huge deal for wine but want to drink it anyway, why not ask to taste a couple? By the side, uh, by the side please. Satay is a Southeast Asian dish which is popular worldwide. Served from the trolley, this stuff is delicious and you can basically have as much as you want. I've been lucky to travel so many airlines now in business class and have some world class food. The main course here tasted fine but the presentation in the tray was not great. This is usually how economy meals are served. Also, I can't remember the last time I saw a three-pronged fork. Anyway, the most important thing for me was a half-decent portion size, as we'd be landing in Delhi in time for me to go straight to the hotel and sleep, which also means I had a few coffees to keep me awake and my body clock ticking over. A couple of hours in, we passed over the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. I remembered the story of North Sentinel Island here, possibly the world's most hostile island, inhabited by an essentially uncontacted tribe, the Sentinelese, who chase away and sometimes kill visitors. There's not a huge selection of entertainment on offer on Malaysian. To be fair, most of its customers are not from English-speaking countries, so it shouldn't be too surprising on a flight between Malaysia and India that there isn't a huge amount of Hollywood cinema. The toilets were clean and there were even some dental kits, which you don't often see on flights this short. To be honest, I spent most of my time aboard relaxing, but not sleeping, and enjoying the hospitality supplied by the very professional crew. In summary, a decent flight, especially considering I'd only paid 38,750 Avios plus 45 pounds for the privilege just two weeks in advance. Next up, I'll be showing you my experiences on Singapore's A380 and 777-300 as I fly to Singapore and onto the USA. But for now, please click the link in the description, download Stereo and find me. Follow the channel and make sure you're around to join me for my next show. Cheers and I'll see you in the next video.